Back on the air. Go Green. It's The Green Show. I'm Peter McFadden. I'm here this morning with Neve Ferguson. I'm also here with Eco Boy, without whom you would hear only silence. And we're broadcasting to you from the attic of the cheese and grain. Hello, Froom. It's the afternoon show with Christine Meadows. And with us today, we've got Gavin Carr. Student Lunch, Episode 5, The Teenagers Strike Back. This is Static for Brails with Rob Dahl and Dave, obviously. I don't have a surname, um, that's just the way things go on the radio. You've been listening to the Froom Festival Summer School performance uh, from the Cheese and Grain, recorded this afternoon. Conductor Jason Thornton with the Froom Festival Summer School Chorus and the Somerset Youth Orchestra. And that was uh, the Brahms German Requiem. If you've tuned in for the eclectic show, welcome. I'm Laurie Parnell. And uh, if you'll excuse me, we'll change the mood. Sometimes the lights don't shine. Sometimes the light don't shine. Hey, Farrell, it was a, a brainchild of a, an artist, a visual artist called David Buckland. And the idea that he had was to take a bunch of artists, scientists and educators up to the high Arctic, to Svalbard, to create an awareness about climate change. And he did this in a, quite an interesting way by taking us all on a, in a 150-foot schooner and we sailed from Tromsø and the first expedition from the tip of mainland Norway up to Svalbard. Hello, Matt. Hi there. And you're in to talk to us about um, gay and lesbian youth, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. I work for a charity um, which is based down in Taunton. Um, it's called Somerset Gay Health. 99% of schools have an anti-bullying policy, yet only 6% of those recognise homophobic bullying within that policy. More and more. It's been a long, cold, lonely winter. Welcome to the first ever Gardener's Question Time event here as part of the Froome Festival. Vigorous foot-long shoots of celandine in the compost heap. So now I dig the wretched things out of the garden as much as I can. But my question is about municipal composting generally and whether people who tip sacks of celandine into municipal compost skips are being antisocial. Do you think some kind of gardening asbo, maybe? What do you think, Jules? <laughs> My second guest is a different sort of local storyteller to the others you've been listening to this week. He is a creator and writer of many TV dramas. It's Matthew Graham. The listeners would not forgive me if I didn't mention the 2006 Emmy winner for Best Drama, Life on Mars. I believe it took seven years to get Life on Mars on the screen. Was that actually in seven years to write it or seven years in production? Um, when we came up with the show, myself and Ashley Fair and Tony Jordan, I wrote... Uh, episode one, which is a, was a version of the episode that finally went out, but it was it was quite different in, in many ways. Interestingly, um, we have now put to rest that old question: Were chocolate bars larger in in our childhood? <laughs> I now know that they were larger yes. because we used an original curly whirly wrapper, yes. but we had to put a, a, a modern day curly whirly into it. And the modern-day Curly Whirly only came three-quarters of the length of the old wrapper. So I now know for sure that Curly Whirlies, at least, were bigger in the 70s yeah. than they are now. You know, I never suspected they'd go through with it.
I'd never taken them seriously. Or more, I'd never taken my life that seriously. I'm Lucy Mokes. And I'm Natalie Batchford. And this is Froome FM News. Coming up on today's show, we have Froome's Eurovision hopeful, Sam Fripp. So, Sam, what inspired you to perform the Eurovision Song Contest? Oh, my goodness. What about Eurovision could not inspire you to get involved yourself? <laughs> it's all the people coming out of pianos and the, the dancers. And I'm such a Euro freak. It's kind of... There's, um, there are different websites online which I check almost daily um, throughout the year. Um, and so I guess it's kind of my constant low-level involvement with everything. I think it went really well, actually. Um, I was really nervous before, but now I've actually done it, and now it's all, you know, done and dusted. It's really exciting, and I want to do it again. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Froome Talking Newspaper for Thursday, the 11th of August, 2011, read by the Lions Group. Father and son artists auction paintings to aid African famine. A father and son duo who are exhibiting at Rook Lane Chapel in Froome are to auction their art. Hello and welcome to a very special programme on froomefm.co.uk with myself, Dave Watkins. For the next 60 minutes, we talk to the mayor of Froome, Helen Sprawson White. Helen has dragged the role of mayor right into the new century and is probably the most popular mayor we've had so far. Okay, um, well, I'm 32 years old, um, which makes me the youngest serving female mayor in the country, um, mm. which is something I'm quite proud of. Mm. And we live in Froome. Um, I work as a healthcare assistant at the GP surgery. Um, so basically, yeah, I live, work, Kids go to school in Froome. My husband works in Froome. He's a nurse. Mm. Um, yeah, Froome is, is everything we do, really. <laughs> Taking over the mayorship was huge in my mind. Um, it isn't about having an ego and being this kind of, you know, mm. person that has to be served. It's about serving. No, you don't and walk around the street saying, like, bow down no, or nothing. Oh, no, I've no. noticed that. It's and quite I, nice I do say. actually, when people say to me, how mm. should we, what should we call you? Mm. Like, Helen is often a good start. <laughs> this is the Froome FM live sessions. I'm Sarah Vian, and tonight we have got an amazing band called Autumn Red. I picked a note from the cries of your dying night. We tend to think of radio as a way of entertaining us, giving us news and information. But what would happen if that same radio brought help to the people who need it most? In developing countries when disaster strikes. A small team has taken on the ambitious task of training people on how to use radio in disasters. Nobody in Froome can have missed the row that has erupted over the last couple of months between Froome Town Council and the Cheese and Grain, played out in the newspapers and the letter pages, through press releases and even through Facebook. Council to take on Cheese and Grain. Froome Town Council looks set to take over the running of the Cheese and Grain after withdrawing all funding to the non-profit-making charity. Matt! Yo! Hi, Sam. How boring was that? Give me double PE over careers talk any day. <laughs> Tell me about it. They always chat about the same boring jobs as if we're all the same. <laughs> yeah, right. You got any ideas what you want to do, then? A few. Nothing definite, though. As long as I make loads of money and don't end up like my mum and dad. I know exactly what you mean. 
Welcome to the Froom FM Mother's Day show. And today we're going to be playing some clips from the Froom FM Fun Day and we're going to have some special Mother's Day messages. Hi, Mama, I love you. Um, I hope you're having a good time. Bye. It's Sasha, that's me. Mother's Day and I love you. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Hello, Mummy, it's Amy and Ellis. Happy Mother's Day. Youth unemployment is, I guess, the, the biggest concern at the moment. It's something that's been going up over recent years. It's not actually just since the, uh, since the crash. It was actually going up before that. Um, and I think it's partly demographics, um, partly the, the number, of, number of youngsters coming onto the market, particularly well-qualified ones now because of the numbers going through uh, universities. Um, but it is also the, the structure of the uh, economy is, is not doing any favours at the moment, I'm afraid, to, to young people. People, and we've got to address that because there's nothing worse than having a whole um, cohort of, of young people leaving school, leaving college uh, and not being able to find work and very rapidly getting into the position where they become uh, virtually unemployable simply because they've never been given an opportunity. Two, 